Good. So thank you. So uh, today we are going to learn about um, wallets and uh, I will take you through and then um, let me share my screen so that we start the class for today. I hope you can see, you can be able to see my screen. Um, so, <clears throat> okay, thanks. So I, I will take some um, short time and then I will hand over to um, Ms. Finn who is going to take us through the next part. So, um, So today we are going to tackle about wallet integration. So let's get to uh, understand or to know what is this wallet integration? Or how do we want to, um, why do we prefer to do wallet integration? Or what is the need for wallet integration? And then we see um, how to do uh, a wallet integration. So uh, integrated wallet is just, um, uh, an integrated proximity of wallets. It contains standardized processes uh, like the payments. For example, payment processing, auto uh, authentication, and uh, transaction history. So usually what happens is service providers um, like the banks that issue uh, cards or so, uh, they do not require their own applications or their own apps. So, but instead they use an integrated process for them to uh, process uh, payments. So um, things like uh, your transactions that you make in, in your, your card and things like that. So uh, they don't need something like an app so that they be able to process your, your, your payments or your transactions. So um, yeah, this, this wallets um, help to lower the, the payment processing time and they reduce fraud and also they are economical. Uh, instead of someone having to carry their own money, just like the traditional wallets work where someone has to carry um, the entire of their, or, or their whole money in a, a, a purse or a bag or a wallet or something like that. Um, these integrated wallets, they help you so that you are able to process your, um, your payments in time. They reduce the time that you take and also they reduce the fraud and they're also economical. It is, it is very easy to use um, a mobile wallet. Um, all you need is to do is to maybe just install an app on your smartphone and register for that given service so that you're able to use um, uh, an integrated wallet. So <clears throat> a crypto wallet is a crypto wallet is, is just a software um, or a hardware designed for um, storing public and private keys uh, representing uh, particular sets of cryptos. So um, it works like a traditional wallet providing a proof of ownership uh, for your, your digital cash. So if you have got um, a digital cash, what happens is that you have um, um, a private key and you also have uh, a public key. So these are uh, meant to uh, provide a proof of ownership for uh, the wallet that you, um, you or, or the digital cash that, that you are having. 
So, um, so this this in the challenge of this week we've been we've been looking at um, um, the algo algorand. So um, these are some of the examples of uh, the, the algo wallets that that we have. We have um, the Pera wallet. This is the best one. It is most compatible with the Algorand um, wallet. We also have the Ledger um, Ledger Nan X, most secure for hardware wallets. We have um, Trust wallets, uh, most trusted mobile uh, wallet, and then we have um, Atomic wallet, which is most available. And then we have my Algo wallet. My Algo wallet is best for uh, web-based uh, browsers. Yeah, so that's, those are the examples of um, Algo wallets. And then now, wh why why do we need um, why do we need um, a wallet or the integrated wallet that we are talking about? So, um, a wallet is just uh, it is composed of two parts. That is, we as we've seen, uh, we've said like it has a public address and it also has a, a private key um or a public key and a private key uh the two um the link between a public key and a private key is rooted in a uh in public private key cryptography uh and is what puts um the crypto in uh in a cryptocurrency so the link between the two is uh what actually puts the link between uh the public private key is uh, what actually uh, puts the crypto in a cryptocurrency. And then in order to receive your purchased tokens of real estate, for example, if you purchase some uh, tokens from, um, say from a given uh, place, then you will need an, you will need an Algorand wallet so that, so that your assets can be be delivered to you. So if you're making payments using um, um, the algos, you so you will need an Algorand wallet so that you um, whatever you purchased can be able to they can be able to deliver those assets to 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 you. The most important thing to remember about wallets is uh, to make sure to save your private keys. Yeah, these private keys allows they they allow you to access your wallet. And if you lose your private key, um, you, you will not be able to access your wallet again. So yeah, just make sure you save both the digital and physical copies of your private key just to be safe. The moment you lose or you're not able to remember your private key, um, that, 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 I think that brings you to the end of you using your wallet because yeah, you cannot be able to retrieve it in, in any way. Um, so, um, the key generation algorithms, which takes place, um, uh, the key generation algorithm, which takes place, which takes a random value as input and then outputs a 32 bit arrays representing a public key and, uh, it's associated with the private key. So, uh, we've talked about uh, a private key and we've also talked about, um, um, a private public key and we've also talked about a private key so there's an algorithm which takes the random value as an input and then it gives an output of um, um, it gives it outputs two 32 bit arrays so this two 32 bit arrays um, yeah they represent the, the public key and also um, a, a private key which is associated with that public key yeah these um they are um yeah they are also referred to as public private key pair because the public key that you have is associated just to uh your private is associated with your private key these keys they perform important cryptographic functions like signing data and verifying the signatures yeah, so um, um, the, the, the private and um, uh, the public key or uh, what I'm trying to explain is uh, the private and the public key, they take in 
some random values and then um, as their input and then they output um, two 32 bit arrays. Um, so these two 32 bit arrays, yeah, they are, uh, they, they are the ones that are representing your public key and your private key. And your public key is um, um, usually has an, an associated private key to it. So uh, the reason why they're important in cryptographic functions, um, yeah, they, they allow you to uh, sign data and verifying of, of signatures. Um, so th this is what happens in a nutshell. So you have um, some input and then we have some uh, random seed. And then this random seed, it gets to um, um, there's a generator here. And then this generator, uh, it generates your private key and also it generates your, your private, your public key and your private key. So uh, that's, that, 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 that is what happens in uh, generation of uh, private and uh, uh, public key. So um, the public key is, uh, is transformed into um, an algorand address. So that um, algorand address is what you are able to see or you're able to uh, actually display as your as your public key. Otherwise, the real public key uh, is usually hidden from you. So it transforms uh, that public key that you have into an algorand address by adding a four bit uh, checksum at the end of the public key and then um, encoding it into um, uh, base 32. So oh, when you, when, when um, you generate um, public key, uh, this public key is being transformed into an algorand address. So this algorand address is um, some of the time referred to as your public address. Uh, it is, um, it takes the public key and then it adds a four bit checksum at the end of the, at the end of the public key. And then, yeah, then encoding it into a 32 base, into a base 32. The result is what both the developer and the end user recognize as the algorand address. So um, the, the one that you, you use as your algorand address is uh, it checks in your public address and then um, adds a four bit checksum and then trans uh, encodes it into base 32. And then at the end of it, what now uh, comes out is now what uh, we refer to as your algorand address. Um, this, uh, the address is 58 character long. So maybe we can have a look and see how, what happens. So we have here, um, your public key, which is, um, um, the hidden here, we have your public key and we also have your, your private key. Um, your public key, uh, uh, is, 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 is then taken and then we had uh, a four bit checksum at the end of, um, of, of your public of your public key, which is in 32 bit we had, um, we, uh, we get to add a four bit checksum to it. And then this four bit checksum um, concatenates, um, it's concatenated towards the, the end of it. And then uh, gets into base 32 and then what comes out, which is now visible, is your your algorand, your algorand address. So that is how you're able to um, uh, to come up with or to generate your your algorand address at the end of it, which is now visible to now um, the end user. So yeah, that is what happens in generating of the algorand address. So. Um, the last thing is the transformation. That is the private key uh, transformation to uh, 25 word um, mnemonic. So what happens is the 25 word mnemonic is um, uh, the most user friendly representation of the private key. So, you know, the private key is like um, uh, getting to 
uh, cram or master your private key is um, a little bit difficult. So it's transformed to a 25 word mnemonic, which is user friendly. Someone can easily uh, be able to write it down or um, be able to remember it. So it is generated by converting the private key bits into uh, um, into 11 bit integers and then mapping those integers to a BIP0039 English word list where the integer n maps to the word in the nth position in the list. Uh, by itself, this creates a 24 word mnemonic and then a checksum is added by, by taking the first two bits uh, bytes of the hash of um, the private key and then it converts them to an 11 bit integer and then um, their corresponding word in uh, in a word list yeah th then this this word is then um, this word is added to uh, the end of the 24 words uh, to create a, a 25 word mnemonic so um, um, I think we'll show us so that we be able to see what happens here. So um, just like what happens in, um, in, in the previous way we're generating the, we were generating the algorithm address. Uh, now here we are generating a 25 word mnemonic that we will be able to uh, remember quite easily. So we take in um, the private key and then this private key, um, we convert to um, 11 bit integer, which is going to give us uh, a 24 words. Um, then those, those 24 words, uh, they're, they're this, um, it maps, maps, maps them into um, an ordered, um, ordered word list. And then the, the ones that are remaining, the first two that are remaining, um, they, they because the 24 words uh, that we 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 have we, we have one word that is left which um, will be joined together with this one so that to, to will be joined at the end of it with together with the 24 so that we're able to uh, generate 25 words which we now term or use as um, um, now visible to use as uh, the 25 five word mnemonic which yeah which we are able to or we are able to remember quite easily as uh, the private um the private the representation of the private key um that we have yeah so after generating uh, a private key um and um and a corresponding address um now we can be able to send algos to the address uh, on uh, on Algorand, will, which will initialize its state on the on the Algorand blockchain. So, if you have been able, if if after you have been able to generate your private and uh, your private key and your and your public key, then uh, you. Um, and um, your private key and your corresponding public key, then you can be able now to uh, send algos uh, to the address on Algorand. So, um, and then when, when, when now you send uh, the algos on the, on, on the address of the Algorand, you will be able to initialize uh, the state on the Algorand uh, blockchain. So, um, in a nutshell, um, this, this is what happened. So we have like an existing Algorand account, one, and uh, which has got, and it has got a valid address. So we have got the Algorand blockchain, and then we have got account one. Um, we have the address, the balance, and and the status of it. So, um, uh, and then we have here uh, an Algorand address, um, the Algorand address. So um, on this other side, we also have uh, a new account on Algorand. Uh, so yeah, th this is the Algorand uh, blockchain. We have account one, the address, the balance, uh, and the status. 
Um, so address one, the account one, sends algos to a valid um, Algorand uh, address. And then there's a transaction that, that happens from two and then the amount and then the fee that is being um, charged for this kind of transactions. And then we have, um, we have account two, which now gives us now the address, the balance, and, uh, and also um, the status of, 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 of that account too. So um, basically that, that is what happens if you already have your, you, you have your Algorand account one and um, uh, with, with, with a valid address. Um, and then this is now the Algorand blockchain and this is now the account. And this is what happens in, in the transaction in that um, when, um, when one uh, is able to send from, this is a new account on, on Algorand, um, we, we can be able to see, like we can be able to, um, like from here, the, from this diagram, you can be able to see the transaction that, uh, that happens uh, when one transacts from this account to um, the, the other. Yeah, so, and basically that is uh, uh, what happens with uh, wallets. Um, yeah, so I want to maybe uh, open floor if someone maybe has a question, then uh, we'll give uh, just five. No, Miss Finn, yeah, to take over. Do, do you have anyone with a question? Yes, Tadese. Hello, uh, Desmond. Thank you for uh, your nice presentation. Again, I <clears throat> uh, label your presentation with Cosimo. Some, somehow, now we get a clue. But uh, we, we can do that one uh, using some commands. But are we going to implement uh, the things which help us to transact from one wallet, uh, from one account to another uh, on the on the challenge. Have you got me? Oh yes, I've gotten you. Um, on on the challenge, um, on the challenge, there is no um, part for a transaction. Of course, uh, the transaction is not there, but uh, for uh, <clears throat> doing that certificate issues, which helps uh, the Ten Academy team to send uh, the certificate of each trainee uh, in a way that is hidden or in a way that is, uh, 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 that mean in a way that is very <clears throat> private. So is this presentation will help us on doing that one. Um, now this one was just to explain to you um, um, wallets and um, um, why we need them and how um, to do the wallet integrations. Yeah. Okay, thank you very much. <clears throat> Do we have anyone else with a question? Okay, if uh, there is none with a question, I think I can um, welcome Ms. Finn if she's in to proceed. Hi everyone, um, my name is Ms. Finn, I am the UX design, the product design of uh, Tenex system. Uh, it's um, perfect with present in the presentation. I will continue. Okay. 
So, uh, I'll present you the UX uh, design, what UX design is, how the process is. I'm just going to do a high level overview. Is a noise. Thank you. So um, I'm going to give you a high level overview of uh, user experience design and how you go about designing something which users can use. So um, maybe if you go to the next page, uh, UX design is the process of uh, designing. Uh, Design teams used to create products that provide meaningful and relevant experiences to users. Meaningful is important because we often use, can you go back? Can, we often relate products that, like any product we made is used by a user. So a person, you might, we might think we have to think how the user uses that product. We have to think how they interact with it. So in order to think for the user is using UX design. So um, when you go next, like the important part of designing a great product or services, there are three or four things that be presented. Um, the first one is what is the real purpose of the product? What are you solving? What are you trying to do? Sometimes we just can, people think designing is just gonna be UI which I will explain later, but it's more than that. It's just helping or solving a problem for the user. You have to think like the user and solve the problem for the user. So yeah, what is the purpose of the product? What are we solving as a product? And the second one is who are using the product? The demographic is important because um, if, it, like, if it is above 50, Years old, we have to think how we present things. We might not have to uh, have small text, maybe. Or if it is for kids, we have to make them, you know, uh, more colorful or something like that. So we have to know the demographic of the user. The next uh, is this research. We have to see, uh, research everything that are important to the project because when you design something, if you are doing like everyone uses a product, everyone uses any kind of product that's made. So you have to see what is the market, what are the requirements, what are the trends. Um, because of if you are out of that kind of trend, people might not use your product. So we have to think and research. And and lastly, but not this, but it is you have to think about mobile because most people use uh, any products on their mobile. So if you do this something for the desktop or the web, you have to think for the mobile, how we're gonna look like a mobile. So we might think we might use a boxy structure where everything lined up on the uh, on horizontal side, but if it is mobile, it will uh, be on top of each other. So we have to think about mobile. In some projects, it's like complicated projects, you have to maybe start from a mobile project because of how complicated it is. It might be easier to start laying out things in the mobile and go to the way because you have more industry to work with. Um, and next, um, I'm going to explain more terminologies. Maybe uh, if you go, can go next. Um, then. The terminologies like uh, uh, what I can you again? Okay, can you hear me? Can you hear anyone hear me? Okay, thank you. Okay. So the so user interface, UI design, is just uh, the, uh, if you can go next, is the next level of things where you are visually implementing things, where the look and feel is the important part of the UI design. You have to just think about the 
uh, UI, which is presentation in the interactability of a product. You won't, won't concern about the UX, like the, even the difference you can see. The UI part will be the colors, the typography, and the, the layout, but the UX is different. So for this one, for the UI design, people might mistake it, what are UI and UX, but the UI design is just visual elements, which are, you know, as important. Then comes uh, design thinking. I'm going briefly as I can be, because you don't have to actually have the time to explain everything. So um, design thinking is interactive process in which we seek to understand the user's challenge, assumptions, and redefine problems in the attempt to identify alternative strategies and solutions. Design thinking is thinking for the user. It started out from empathizing for the users, and we, we are, have to define the problems, know the problems, then we provide an idea how to solve those problems, then we showcase those problems with creating solutions and we test those solutions to our users. So this is high level. If you connect the empathize part is, is empathize, you have to think for the user because users, uh, any product we made, we, have, we make from the, for the users. We have to make for the person. So thinking for the user is important. We have to define their needs, the problems they are facing and get uh, valuable insights. Then comes ideas. We drop down ideas. We drop down uh, uh, ideas that the, the challenges we, we might solve those problems. So challenge assumption produce ideas for innovative solutions. Then comes prototyping, which we uh, began creating solutions. Those solutions um, in the product, we showcase them as a prototype. And at the last, we test them at last we uh, test those solutions. Then comes um, user personas. Um, user personas are, um, if you know them, uh, if you don't, like it is fictional characters that create based on user research and it present different parts of user type that will use the service. So we are saying empathize for the users. So uh, when you research people who are using our product, we have to think like them, who are they? If, they, if it is in the comics or if it is something like who are the, the users? If it is a mom who are ordering something for, for her child, uh, how are we gonna go about it? How are we gonna make her life easier? So user personas are like fictional characters. We create them so that we will meet their needs, we will meet their uh, requirements. So, um, so creating personas help us understand users and their needs, experiences, and behaviors. Most importantly, the goals. What are the goals they are uh, want to meet? Then comes user journey. I'm going fast, so uh, because we don't have time. So visual presentation of a process customer goes through to achieve goal. So any process kind, um, the process that started out from opening a website again and at last achieving a goal or like buying something or uh, doing something there comes many steps uh, they will pass so those pass they the things they will pass we have to make every moment count because we might not get a second chance so in those in those ex chance in those steps we have to make sure that what are the user feeling what are they are going through? If they are having a hard time, we have to make them easier. For example, for this one, we have both on the left side, the user journey, the personas in the left side, the right side will be the user journey map. So both ways, you can see we created someone named Alto Abbebe, who, who is female, she's a fresh graduate. First of all, this is made for the Tenex system. So when we when a trainee comes to um, this uh, system, how they go about it. So from the website start of things to, uh, you know, enrolling or applying something. So this is a, s a small part of it where they will be able to showcase here, like um, awareness, like the first stage will be maybe awareness, consideration, if you see on the top, the red uh, one. The consideration, the acquisition, the service, and the reality, those 
and we go to the website, we explore, we decide to apply the next step and at least uh, the waiting part. So this will show what are they feeling, even the feeling part. I mean, they are explorers, they are curious, they're excited, they're happy. What are they feeling? What are the pain points? Maybe slow website might be a pain point. So we have to, maybe there are opportunities to be, maybe, maybe creating a good impression might help the students. Maybe have many applicants, might people recommend. So those are the things. The last part um, is the tools. You might use any kind of tools to use. Start out from sketchbook. I, uh, people mistake, maybe if people design something, you should start from sketchbook. You should start from writing down how we're gonna do about it. You shouldn't start from uh, software or even go to development because those two kinds have like different mindset. If you design something, it's creative part and if you code it's still creative but it uses different kind of mind so you don't have to think about color when you coding so just two parts should be different so we started out sketching on piece of paper and a book and ideas how to present something how to play with it and go to design software any software even photoshop we we have started from what i started from photoshop so you can do any design software and start like laying down things. Then comes to the project where you just think about the coding, how things should work. Like the, like the technical part, you think about those things after, you know, doing the creative part, maybe the colors, the typography, those things. But if you finish, going there will be easier. So this is uh, a presentation. If you have any uh, questions uh, let me know maybe i will have another um thing maybe if you have time like from the tenex system i want to show you how things are implemented um, we, we have a two page so it won't be long so the first part is the research so when you this is the training uh, structure where we want to see for example for the home page we want to see competency competency levels we want to see research recent feedback job readiness badges like we we just started out like researching everything we need to build a product we build a system that is beneficial and um, will help the trainees so what are the needs so for, for for example for the performance this is a trainee performance so we have to show show them job readiness we have to show them compare the expected speed of development uh, we have to show their work having a CV, having to see their assignments, the challenges, uh, the grades and everything. So started out here and if we go next. Um, the la this is the design part after, you know, structuring it. Everything started out from the top where you can see the names, the total commits, um, the job readiness it comes to the welcome part, the bookmarks, those elements are additional but the main part you want i want you to see is the key metrics where you go down from the red thing uh, bottom where we see those elements like the messages the share link these are the users needs the user needs those elements to actually get where they are if they are on wrong side they will correct it if it is good side you have to continue on the good performance so this meets this all thing is created because we started out from thinking why the user needs, empathizing from the users, and we have like defined or understand what the user. So we define here the user needs this and this. The user needs their, to see their performance. They have to be job ready. So in order to make them job ready, we have to showcase them their grades, their performance every week, the good, if you even. We have the showrooms where we showcase the good works have been made. We have to showcase them the, at the end, maybe see the jobs on the last part, but we have to show them uh, the feedback. All the things will help them be job ready. Uh, if you have any questions, um, yeah, can ask me more. Um, 
Do you have any questions? Or? Thank you. Um, so if we do not have any other questions, I think we um, can stop there and then we proceed with the rest of the discussion in Slack. So as you prepare for your interim submissions. <laughs>